they would take uh, chunks of, of, of uh, different kinds of stone. Uh, I think it's mostly limestone out there, but anyway, but uh, they, they'd take these chunks of stone and then they would uh, just kind of, you know, um, break them into blocks and then they would use just a really thick mortar and they would just kind of, the, the bottom of the, uh, the of the walls there in, in the Kirtland Temple are about four feet thick because <laughs> okay, they just kind of uh, glue all these rocks together as they as they as they go up welcome everybody to uh, this week's podcast and i am uh, rod meldrum i am excited about having this uh this uh, we're talking about the, this is number 27 and this is doctrine and covenants section 71 through 75 so uh, i am excited about uh, this this uh, uh information today and i'm going to do something a little bit different today um, we uh, kind of cover just a couple of things, but these sections are pretty much just for you know, specific people. And, um, and I want to kind of give you a better, a little bit better overview and maybe actually kind of a better feel for, uh, where they were at, where Joseph Smith was at. Um, this is, um, in the, in the Kirtland period essentially here and, uh, and, and, and kind of go through a little bit about what was going on in Joseph Smith. And, uh, and Emma's lives here. So, um, so to start off with, in section uh, 71, uh, this is actually had, this, this revelation was received at the John Johnson farm. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about all that here in just a few minutes. But, the, uh, but one of the things I love about this particular one is that in, in, in verse seven, it says, wherefore confound your enemies, call upon them to meet you, both in public and in private, and inasmuch as ye are faithful, their shame shall be made manifest. And I kind of, I kind of like that. Um, the Lord is, uh, he's not saying being con be confrontational. He's, uh, he's saying that, that, that if you confound your enemies, that is basically uh, people who are trying to do you wrong. And if you confound them, essentially you are able to explain things and, and make sense. And when you make sense to other people, then uh, it's going to be a little bit of embarrassment for those who are trying to trying to uh, to to tear you down. Uh, verse eight says, "Wherefore let them bring forth their strong reasons against the Lord." Um, I love that. Uh, basically, the Lord saying, you know, people have this idea um, when they're when they're a little bit learned to uh, to hearken not unto the, the words of the Lord. And to not follow the Lord, and uh, that, they, that they have better answers <laughs> to things than the Lord does, and um, and I, I love that when He says, "Let them bring forth their strong reasons against the Lord." Verily, thus saith the Lord unto you: There is no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And I love this promise from the Lord when uh, when He talks about you know if if we just follow the Lord, if we will we will uh, completely. Um, turn our hearts and minds over to him if we accept the things that he has uh, placed in the in the scriptures then uh, then uh, we will have answers to all these different kinds of things we'll be able to confound our enemies we will have uh, the ability to uh, to uh, explain things in ways that other people are not going to be able to uh, to uh, go against you um, that says no weapon that is formed against you shall shall prosper. So, um, I just like I like I like that because it, it's again it's a promise that the Lord says that uh, it, it, even if they try to tear you down, okay, that's not going to work um, because uh, because truth will ultimately prevail. And uh, so that and He's given us His His promise about that. Verse ten says, and if any man lift his voice against you, he shall be confounded in my own due time. So I like that in my own due time. Um, it's not necessarily that you're going to be confounded, that they're going to be confounded immediately. Um, but at some point, um, the truth is going to come out. And as, and as the truth comes out, then uh, it will confound the wisdom of the wise shall perish, as, as the Lord said. And, uh, and, and, and so um, those who think that they are smarter than God will be shown that it's not the case. Uh, section 72 is in December of 1831, and uh, this, this is particularly talking about the stewardship of the bishop, and this is specifically about Noel K. Whitney. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, Noel K. Whitney and kind of give you um, 
a, a little tour through his store and uh, and 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 kind of a little bit of what was going on in the life of uh, Joseph and Emma at this point in time. Um, Little K. Whitney was ordained as a as a bishop. Uh, he was set apart as a bishop of, of the Lord's storehouse. Um, part of that was probably because of the fact that he owned the kind of the general store in the area, and it was a, uh, a gathering place for a lot of people to come and, and to uh, to trade and to barter and so forth that they would do. Um, section seventy three. Um, was just talking about the Sidney Rigdon and the prophet uh, Joseph Smith were to begin uh, uh, translating again. This is the inspired version of the Bible they were working on here, and uh, section seventy four. Uh, it's talking about here, this is in January 1832, and um, this is a, in regard to a conference that was that was going on there. Um, the one thing I like about that one is verse 7, the little children are holy, being sanctified through the atonement of Jesus Christ. And I love that, that uh, statement about little children are holy. And uh, anyway, so that verse 75. Then we have, um, or section 75 here, we have um, a, a, a whole bunch of uh, individuals are, are talked about. This is in Amherst, uh, Ohio, January 25th of 1832. But again, I'm going to talk about uh, some of these uh, different, uh, um, I want to show you kind of a little bit of the area there. And so you can kind of get a feel for what's going on. Now, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Kirtland period here, there's the, uh, the chronology of, of the Kirtland period shows, and I can, I can show you this here. This is the uh, Kirtland chronology. This is 1831. Uh, Joseph and Emma were in the, uh, the Morley Farm. Okay, that's where they were at, the, Mor the Isaac Morley Farm. And, eight, and then, uh, then in 1832, they were actually um, in the John Johnson home. And we'll talk about that. I'm going to tell you about that in a little bit and show you some pictures of the John Johnson home. And then they moved into the uh, the Neil K. Whitney store, and then they had their own house uh, from 1834 to 1837. I'll show you a couple of pictures of that. This Kirtland period is an interesting period because there was it was like the uh, the heavens were opened, and the Lord had uh, numerous appearances of deity, basically, um, and they and there was numerous uh, revelations were given. But let me uh, start off here a little bit. When people would come, when the saints would come. Uh, from New York in these areas, uh, many times they came by boat, and when they came by boat, they would come on the uh, down down onto the um, Lake Erie, and they, they would they would come down to a place called Fairport Harbor, which was the the nearest harbor closest to Kirtland. So here's a couple of pictures. I'm going to do my best because uh, some of you may be listening to this, so I'm going to kind of uh, exp describe what is on the photos, but hopefully you can see the photos <laughs> as well. Okay, but, uh, but this is this is the modern day Fairport Harbor, and uh, it's, it still is a harbor. But it was back in those days. It was the it was, it was the closest harbor on the Great Lakes to get to Kirtland. So a lot of people would take the take boats or, or uh, yeah, ships over here. Um, it's another another shot of uh, Fairport Harbor there. Just it's a beautiful beautiful area. This was a, a nice sunset uh, time when we were there. And of course, if you have a, 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 a harbor, then you probably have a lighthouse. And here is the lighthouse that's there. This was just a, a, an amazing um, evening when we were there with the, the lighthouse there and the, the sun's rays as it, was, as it was setting on the harbor there. It's just uh, pretty cool, actually, how that looked. But I want to also show you, this is the, the, the Morley Log Schoolhouse. This is the marker that is there at the Morley, Isaac Morley um, Farm. Now, the Isaac Morley Farm, <clears throat> a couple of things about that that were interesting about the Isaac Morley Farm. The Morleys um, were part of Sidney Rigdon's uh, Reformed Baptist movement. Um, they called themselves the Big Family. <clears throat> it was about 50 to 100 people, depending on when they were at, um, that were living there. And, and they were trying to essentially live kind of like a united order. Um, and uh, Sidney Rigdon was one of the ones who was actually... Um, uh, you know, he was, well, he was the head of that. Um, then we have missionaries who were sent from New York by Joseph, by the Lord and Joseph Smith. And they came down and they, and they met with uh, Sidney Rigdon. And he, and he was converted. In the, and the whole group, this whole uh, big family was, uh, all the adults at least, were converted to the gospel. And they became, and so this became kind of the new place. And the Isaac Morley Farm 
Uh, the reason why I brought up the Fairport Harbor is because the Isaac Morley Farm is on a on an old Indian trail that uh, that goes from the um, the Fairport Harbor um, and kind of drops down and goes goes west towards Kirtland. So this would be on the way towards Kirtland um, is where this was where this was going on here. So. Uh, Joseph and Emma moved into the home. They, they actually built a home for Joseph and Emma here at the Isaac Morley farm. And, uh, and, and the Smith family was there. They had uh, a lot of joy there. There was, a, there was a, a, a number of revelations that were received there in the Isaac Morley farm. But, um, but there's also some, some real tragedy. Uh, Joseph and Emma, um, had, were, or Emma was pregnant and uh, gave birth to twins. And uh, the, the, the twins' names were Thaddeus and Louisa, and they only lived for a few hours, and then they both passed away. They both died, leaving, uh, leaving Emma just heartbroken, and Joseph as well. And then, uh, and then uh, uh, John Murdoch and his wife, they had twins as well, and, uh, and, and Sister Murdoch actually passed away from childbirth, and so uh, John Murdoch actually then essentially gave Joseph and Emma the two the, the, the two uh, babies that they had that his wife had had and after she passed away and uh, said you know you can raise them as your own which uh, Joseph and Emma you know did at that point so this was this was all going on at the Isaac Morley farm this was what we're talking about here okay and uh, so um so they, they actually they adopted the children at nine days old and named the they named them Joseph Murdoch Smith and Julia Murdoch Smith after their biological mother. So, uh, so there you go. So that, that has a little bit more about the Isaac Morley farm. And then from the Isaac Morley farm, they uh, they moved over to the John Johnson home. So I want to show you some images of the John Johnson uh, home here. And uh, let me see here. I'll open this up. Okay. So this is the John Johnson farm. Now, a little bit about John Johnson. He he was uh, quite a wealthy guy. He had uh, a lot of land. He had uh, a, a nice big farm. He had uh, you know um, a, a, a sawmill, and he and he was quite an, on, uh, an entrepreneur. He actually had uh, several businesses that he did, and he was quite uh, quite well off. And uh, this is this is a little bit about of his farm here, showing that. Um, this next picture, that's uh, Mark Eubanks. <laughs> the, uh, many of you may recognize him. He was on KSL uh, Channel 5 uh, in Utah. He was a weather forecaster for about 20 or 30 years. He was on the, one of the tours with me. Here he is with me at the uh, John Johnson Farm. Um, this, is, this is the house. So it was, a, uh, it was actually a, quite a large house for the time. And it had uh, several rooms. And, uh, and I was going to show you some of the inside of the rooms here. Now Joseph Smith at the time um, when this was going on, they had that the, they had the the, uh, the Murdoch twins that they were that they were doing. They moved into this uh, larger home, <coughs> and this is um, kind of south and east of Kirtland in this area here. And uh, and there was a bowery. They actually set up a kind of a uh, as they they take uh, um, poles. And uh, create a uh, a framework, and then would put uh, uh, sticks and so forth over the top of that to create a shade spot. And then Joseph Smith would often actually uh, come here and, and preach there at the Bowery, um, which they had set up in front of the, uh, the John Johnson Farm. Now, interestingly enough, uh, the, the uh, step that you see here, um, the railing there, um, the the original stones that there are there. Actually, uh, the, the same stones that Joseph Smith would often be standing upon, as he would deliver his messages, <laughs> so it's pretty, his uh, his sermons and things, um, and those are the original stones. So those are stones that Joseph Smith himself actually uh, would would stand on when they were doing that. Now the Bowery, though, um, here's a little bit about the Bowery. There, they uh, just how, how they would uh, stand there, and and he would uh, he said that this is from Lorenzo Snow. It says, when we reached Hiram, the people were already assembled in a small bowery. There were about 150 or 200 people present. The meeting had already commenced and Joseph Smith was standing in the door of Father Johnson's house, looking into the bowery and addressing the people. His remarks were confined principally to his own experiences, especially the visitation of the angel 
giving a strong and powerful testimony in regard to these marvelous manifestations. As he proceeded, he became very strong and powerful and seemed to affect the whole audience with the feeling that he was honest and sincere. Lorenzo Snow. So that's a little bit about the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Bowery here. Now, when you go to the uh, John Johnson Farm, this is one of our tour groups here, and uh, they, they usually have you start off in kind of what is a, uh, was a originally it was a carriage house for the John, for the Johnsons, and it's pretty cool because they have a lot of these uh, old um, period kinds of things like this uh, like this candlestick holder and uh, other other, other um, miscellaneous uh, crockery and uh, and uh, containers and things. Um, flasks and uh, and that they had different kinds of uh, water bottles and flasks and so forth that they would have there. There's another shot of the, the these are these are uh, flasks with corks in them and silver goblets and uh, of different sizes here. Um, and then there's a there's a uh, a candlestick um, maker over on the left hand side here. You can actually see. Um, if you're, if you're, if you're watching this, you can actually see the, uh, uh, they would pour wax into those things and then, and then, uh, put a wick down the middle of it, then pour wax in it and that would create, uh, candles so they could make candles with that. Um, and here are some more, just another couple of shots of that. Um, interestingly enough, when they, when the church bought the, bought the, uh, the property and was going to, uh, Begin to restore it. They found that uh, that they actually had quite a colorful um, <laughs> uh, that the, the house was painted in some pretty amazing colors. the uh, The floor here, the green, black, and red checkered floor, was the original floor that they that the Johnsons had in their house. So they were quite colorful as far as that's concerned. And they they had uh, they had faux um, wood on uh, several places where they had uh, uh, painted you know, different kinds of wood looking structures, but even though it wasn't um, uh, that kind of wood. Anyway, it was it's interesting to see all that, how they how they did that. But here's, um, again, this is the, now this is one of the bedrooms. This is happens to be the bedroom that Joseph and Emma were sleeping in at the time when we haven't got to this just yet, but uh, when the, uh, the, the ruffians broke into the John Johnson farm and dragged Joseph out, um, and the Murdoch twins, one of the Murdoch twins actually died from that. And, and, uh, the tarred and feathered Joseph, that was, at, that was, that was here at the, uh, at the John Johnson farm. This is the room that he was in at the time. Uh, they had quite a large kitchen, uh, you know, for the time, especially. So they had, uh, uh, these, you know, th these are different period, uh, pots and, uh, and, uh, kettles and things that they would use on tables. And, uh, and the, oh, the, the, uh, the faux painting I was telling you about, like for example, there on the mantle of this uh, of the fireplace here, you can see um, that they they had um, just taken it and, and made it really kind of an interesting uh, wood look. As you can see the, uh, the the wavy lines in there. Um, that's one of the things that they were doing with paint. Um, this is just some of the period kinds of uh, of, of instrument implements that they would use for cooking and baking. Um, this is a special, this, this is the main kind of uh, living room area in the John Johnson home. And, uh, and it shows a, uh, a couple of, this has a couple of benches because this has um, been set up for people coming there to, uh, you know, on, on tours. But on the desk is sitting a, a little box and also um, scriptures and uh, some notes and, and a quill pen. And, uh, and several of the revelations that jo that, uh, that Joseph Smith received actually happened here at the uh, at the John Johnson farm. In fact, uh, let, me, let me tell you just really quickly here. Um, the John Johnson home, um, God the Father and and Christ both appeared there in the Johnson home. Um, this is this is the room where they where, where um, they appeared. Revelations were received in the John Johnson home section one. Uh, section 65, 67, 68, 69, 71, 73, 74, 76. That's the vision we're going to be talking about next week. And uh, section 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 99, and section 133 um, were all received um, at, 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 here at the John Johnson Farm. 
The preparation for the Book of Commandments and receiving of the preface occurred at the Johnson home, as was the beginning of our Doctrine and Covenants. When the book was ready to go to press, the Prophet Joseph Smith said, quote, The foundation of the church is now laid for the last days, and it's a benefit to the whole world. Revelations from God are recorded as a testimony of his personal desire for all coming into the church to acquaint themselves with him. Our prophets receive revelation for the church. We can receive revelation for ourselves through the power of the Holy Ghost. He is the way, he is the way, our guide, our light, our king. This is life eternal. They might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Um, so anyway, this this is a really was a was a amazing uh, place here, the John Johnson Farm. It was actually the home is, is quite like I said, quite large. Uh, they actually had some indoor plumbing, which was not common for the day. Um, they had a sink there and so forth. This is this is on the, one of the upper rooms here where they would they would uh, get together. These are some period things. This is a loom where uh, they may have uh, been uh, doing some things. There's a, uh, you can see there's a, uh, a, a spinning wheel over here. There's a, there's a spinning wheel uh, for uh, for making cloth and things. Uh, back behind there, they called that a weasel. And uh, that, so it was for measuring out the yarn, essentially. <coughs> In fact, if you ever heard the, the term pop goes the weasel, after it would go to a certain point, then it would pop and it would let you know how far how, how many yards of yarn you had. And here's just some spools of, of yarn and, and uh, fabric and so forth there. There's the weasel again. And uh, and then and then here again at the, at the John Johnson farm, there was there was numerous um, uh, revelations that were given to the prophet Joseph Smith through the Lord <coughs> here at the John Johnson farm. Okay, so I wanted to, uh, to, to show you that. And then um, then from there, John Johnson farm, then, then Joseph and Emma, actually then they, okay, they, uh, I, I love the, uh, the, uh, account of the prophet Joseph Smith when he came from New York and he first arrived in Kirtland. He, um, hold on just one second here. I don't know what's going on with that. Okay, there we go. They when he first arrived in Kirtland. It was in the winter time, and he came to the uh, Newell K. Whitney store, and, uh, and 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 he and he and he got down off of. I think he was actually on a sleigh, and, uh, and he got down and uh, and went into the store, and Newell K. Whitney was standing behind the counter there, and he said, "Newell K. Whitney, thou art the man," and uh, Newell K. Whitney. Um, kind of looked up at him and said, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't know who you are. And he says, I'm Joseph Smith, the prophet. You've prayed me here. Now, what do you want? <laughs> um, and and Nilke Whitney and his wife had been praying to be able to find more uh, more religion, to find the true religion. And uh, and, and so this was really a, a, an interesting answer to their prayers. And when Joseph Smith just appeared, just uh, out of nowhere, just just all of a sudden stood up at the, at the store. This is a, a little bit uh, closer view of the Neil K. Whitney store as it is today. It's pretty much like it was back in that time. It's actually a, quite a large building. There's several rooms in it. The, uh, the the lower left hand part there, you can see the door there goes into the main store. Then there's the storehouse on the right hand side, and up up and upstairs there's a couple of bedrooms, and then there was also the study, where Joseph Smith received several other. Um, uh, revelations and on the on the the back right corner of this uh, this home was uh, was a small room that ended up becoming known as the School of the Prophets, and I'll show you a couple of pictures of that here as well. So this is Neil K. Whitney. This is one of our tour groups here, and uh, just at, just enjoying the uh, the time there in Kirtland. Um, the, uh, the the when Neil K. Whitney became the bishop of the uh of this that he that he had to do a lot of bartering and there's a lot of things people would bring in what they had they had maybe they had some chickens and they had some eggs or whatever and then he would trade them for other things um and so these are some of the implements that they uh, think that they would have been they brought we would have had barrels of kind of you know, beans and, and all kinds of different uh, uh legumes and, and and grains and things 
Um, the, the, obviously, a couple of uh, wood burning stoves in there to keep the place warm in the winter time. Um, and then just the, the, these uh, wooden shovels and things like that is just really interesting that how how innovative they were. Um, these are some of the uh, the tinsmith things hanging up on the top here, where you could put a lamp in there, and then the uh, the light from the candles would throw interesting patterns all over the room. So it kind of just be you know just make it interesting. It had uh, there's some women's hats and uh, and china um, sets of uh, plates and and uh, things of china. There's books. Uh, obviously, there'd be Book of Mormon there, and things like uh, you know tea kettles and uh, those kinds of things. So. Those are all things that would have been typically at the uh, store here. Um, this is just showing another another image of the uh, of the area where the where um, Neil K. Whitney would actually um, bring people in and, and trade. They would they would trade with furs. They would trade with all kinds of things. And then uh, they had nails. You can see some of the nails there on top of that uh, that barrel there. Some of the old uh, iron nails that they would use. And um, and then you know things like even rope, and other kinds of materials. So here's things like uh, you know sacks of barley and uh, and rice and peas and lentils and and then cider. A lot of times would come, or honey would come in these barrels as well. And so it, these are the kinds of things that you would typically find in the Newell K Whitney store. Here's some other uh, images of the of some of the rope and and uh, things that they would have there. Um. Upstairs, there was a room where they would uh, they had a table there and a fireplace, and this is where a lot of the revelations actually happened. In fact, they uh, they call it this the revelation room, um, which is up in the upper right hand corner of the of the uh, Whitney home. And uh, and Joseph and Emma had a bedroom up there, and then they also had the, the availability to just to be there and just to uh, to focus and concentrate and receive these revelations. Here's a period table that was there. Um, I love this picture. This is a, a woman's hat um, there at the uh, at the Neil K. Whitney store. This is a, kind of a, a hat of the period, what they would have looked like a little bit. And there's a bonnet and then there other, other kinds of paintbrushes and things here in the background. Um, they're on the counter at the Neil K. Whitney store. Uh, the missionaries um, the, are there. When, you when they take you up into this room, there's the table there. And, uh, and, they, and they tell about the, uh, the amazing revelations that Joseph Smith had in the uh, in this in this area in the uh, in the Whitney store. And then uh, and then just uh, this is uh, one of our, our tour groups there uh, listening to the missionaries as they are, are telling about what was going on in the revelation room. Now this room here is a very small little room. Um, it's actually next to the uh, the room with the table and things in it. Um, these are some uh, some dear friends of mine on the tours and so forth. And the, but this is the, a small room. In fact, the room was so small there's really only two room for about three rows of benches. And then the missionaries sit up in the front and they talk about the um, the yeah what what went on here. But this was called the School of the Prophets. This is the original one before the before the uh, Kirtland Temple had been built yet. And uh, so this is where they were, were first there. And I wanted to, to share with you, to just give me an idea of how small this is. Um, this is the fireplace, and there's the two chairs in the front where the sister missionaries usually sit, and then this is the three benches. That's as big as the room is. You can see the, the, uh, the front of the chairs on the right-hand corner of this. So it's just, a, it's just a tiny little room, maybe 12 by probably 10 feet. I don't know, it's, it's not very big. But think of the significance of what happened here. Um, I want to share with you um, a couple of, of uh, testimonies of, of, of people that were there. This is the testimony of John Murdoch. Now remember that John Murdoch was the individual who gave um, Joseph and Emma the twins that his wife had before she passed, passed away. And this is what uh, John Murdoch said. He says, quote, During the winter of 1833, we had a number of prayer meetings in the prophet's chamber. In one of those meetings, the prophet told us if we could humble ourselves before God and exercise strong faith, we should see the face of the Lord. And about midday, the visions of my mind were opened and the eyes of my understanding were enlightened. And I saw the form of a man, most lovely, 
The visage of his face was sound and fair as the sun, his hair a bright silver gray, curled in most majestic form, his eyes a keen penetrating blue, and the skin of his neck a most beautiful white, and he was covered from neck to the to the feet with a loose garment, pure white, whiter than any garment I had ever seen before. His countenance was most penetrating and yet most lovely, and while I was endeavoring to comprehend the whole personage from head to feet, it slipped from me, but it left on my mind the impression of love for months that I never felt before to that degree. But one of my, my personal favorite ones, and we're going to talk about Joseph Smith's testimony um, from section 76 next week. But one of my favorite ones is the testimony of Zebedee Coltrane, who was also there and participated in the, um, the School of the Prophets. Um, this is an account of one of the times when, when uh, Christ actually appeared to them. And this is what Zebedee wrote um, in his, uh, uh, of, of his experience. He said, speaking of the Savior, quote, I saw him, and I suppose that others did. And Joseph answered, That is Jesus, the Son of God, our elder brother. Then speaking of the Father, Zebedee said, quote, He was surrounded as with a flame of fire, which was so brilliant that I could not discover anything else but his person. I saw his hands, his legs, his feet, his eyes, nose, mouth, head, and body in the shape and form of a perfect man. This appearance was so grand and overwhelming that it seemed I should melt down in his presence. The sensation was so powerful that it thrilled through my whole system. I felt it in the marrow of my bones. He also related, quote, The prophet Joseph said, This was the father. Zebedee concluded by saying, I saw him. This was some special experiences that were going on here in the, uh, in the Whitley store and the uh, School of the Prophets. And I just wanted to share with you what that looks like and just show you how, even from small and insignificant things, great things can happen. Um, it was from this, this room that, uh, that the, uh, the, the, the uh, Kirtland Temple was conceived and, and uh, began to have work done on it. Um, they, this is, um, again, revelations were had here in the, uh, in, the, in the Whitney store. And this is a really a special, a special time. All right. So now I want to uh, go over to uh, at this point then, then uh, Joseph and Emma um, were able to get their own home. They had been living with other people, which is not very convenient. <laughs> okay. And uh, so they had been living with these other people and they, and they appreciated all that. Um, but uh, Emma, uh, at this point in their lives, had never really had her own, her own home, her own kitchen and, and, and her own place. Um, and so, uh, so they built this home and this is what it kind of looked like. This is actually from the Community of Christ here. This is what the, uh, it, it talks a little bit about the home and, and what it was like, but this is a picture of the home as it sits today. So it's still there. And uh, this is just uh, about three or four homes down from where the, uh, the Kirtland Temple is located. I just wanted to show you a picture of Joseph and Emma's uh, home here in, in Kirtland. Now, then, the, uh, the, the work on the temple, um, the revelations on the, on, on the temple began to, uh, to, to show up a, bit, a little bit later here. Um, let me see here. There we go. And uh, this area here is where the quarry was, where the stone for the temple. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about the Kirtland Temple. It was made, but well, the, the, uh, the type of construction is called rubble stone construction. They would take uh, chunks of, of, of uh, different kinds of stone. Uh, I think it's mostly limestone out there, but anyway, but they, they, they'd take these chunks of stone and then they would uh, just kind of, you know, um, break them into blocks and then they would use just a really thick mortar and they would just kind of the the bottom of the uh, of the walls there in in the kirtland temple are about four feet thick because <laughs> okay, they just kind of uh, glue all these rocks together as they as they as they go up 
uh, the top of it of the walls are about two feet thick. So they actually go from four feet and they kind of taper on up to two feet at the top of the, of the temple. Um, but the stone was quarried from this place here just south of the town of, uh, of Kirtland. And so this is the quarry where they got the stone from. You can see it's just a, it's a really pr uh, pretty place out here. It's one, from one of the tours here. And uh, this is just uh, showing some fall leaves here at the, at the quarry. There's one of our tour groups there at the, uh, at the quarry. And then this is actually, you can see um, a little bit about, you can see some of the marks from the quarry. So they would have, a, this is you know, solid stone. What they would do is they would take these steel, um, oh, probably you know, three or four, uh, two or three feet long uh, pieces of steel with a tip on it. And it and it worked usually in teams, two, two guys at a time. And one person would hold the steel while the other guy basically hammers it with a sledgehammer. And then and they would, they would it had kind of a, uh, a flat edge on the bottom of it. So it wasn't really to a point. It was actually more like a chisel. And so they would, they would, they would hit that. And then the person that was holding the, uh, the, uh, the drill, if you want, what, the, what, the, what they call it, um, they would, they would, they would rotate it a little bit and then they would hit it again and they would rotate it and they would hit it and rotate and hit it and they would just keep hammering, hammering. And as it, and as it rotates around there, it just breaks off a little bits of it. So you can actually see these vertical um, shafts, if you will, of the, of the, uh, the, the process of this uh, breaking these rocks off here. Uh, here's another shot you can see of that. You can see all along the, uh, this one edge of this shelf here, you can see the vertical shafts going up and down. Those are where they actually would drill this. Then they'd take a, a breakout, a, a chunk of this. It would actually be pretty much like in a, in a block or a square rectangular piece of stone and then they would take that stone and then they would put it on wagons and then haul it up to where the temple site was which is how they would then build the temple so that this is uh, just showing where they got the stone from here's some some more these are still visible today obviously because they're in solid rock although they're covered with lichen and things now but, uh, but you can actually see where the saints had been uh, um, quarrying this stone out for the temple this, this is actually a block that was still there that uh, they had they had uh, not moved it out apparently, but you can still see where they had uh, that drilled and, and and broken that uh, that piece of block out. But it was just you know, that's probably about five or six inches between each one of those. Um, the amount of work it would take to sit there and uh, and hammer that down and, and, and break those blocks out was just absolutely. I mean, it's, it's mind boggling how they would do all that. Anyway, so that's a little bit how they would get the uh, the quarry stone for the Kirtland Temple. And then we want to go to the Kirtland Temple itself. And uh, so let's take a look over here for uh, the Kirtland Temple. And uh, this is uh, this is the Kirtland Temple built 1833 to 1836. So this is uh, not we're not quite there yet in the in our Come Follow Me Gospel Doctrine uh, um, podcast. But, uh, but then we're kind of jumping just a little bit ahead. But uh, this is what is going to culminate in the house of the Lord, uh, is what Joseph Smith called this, uh, the dedicatory prayer on and, and March 27th of 1836. So that was actually when this actually happened. But we right now we're in 1831 in these revelations that we're talking about here in Doctrine and Covenant sections 71 through 75. Um, here's some just beautiful shots of the Kirtland Temple. This is the Kirtland Temple in, in its autumn splendor with the, uh, it's just so beautiful with the flowers everywhere and uh, the community of Christ does a great job of keeping that, uh, the landscaping things up. Although I will have to say that the Kirtland Temple, um, if there was ever an earthquake, it would, it would not do well because that rubble, that uh, uh, rubble stone construction there's no reinforcement in it. Um, it's just essentially just mortar holding the uh, the rocks together. And if that mortar breaks or in, in an earthquake, it would go down pretty much. So I'm hoping that uh, that we can can buy the Kirtland Temple from the Community of Christ at some point in time. And uh, and, and the, the church has gotten really good at restoring things like this, temples and things. Um, but the restore, but the the, the Community of Christ, which is the, what formerly the RLDS Church. Um, they, uh, Lachlan Mackay, who was the, uh, who was the head of their, of their sites and so forth for the community of Christ, I said that, um, 
it's probably the last the last thing that they would ever sell the church as far as that's concerned is the Kirtland Temple. It's kind of like one of their their prized um, uh, visitors areas. Visitor center. They have a beautiful visitor center there. And they're, they're they're very kind and they let people come in and do and, and take um, uh, tours through that. Just uh, this is just some of the, the, the one of the beautiful flowers here just outside the temple. You can kind of see a little bit of the uh, the work. The plaster of the temple actually. Um, the original plaster actually gleamed in the sun. It actually sparkled because the uh, the, the women, many of the women would actually take their china and break it up, and then they put it into the plaster that they that they put on the outside uh, surface of the temple, and it gave it kind of a sparkly look. And uh, they, they made those kind of sacrifices for the temple. Again, this is another really just a, a pretty flower here with the temple in the background. <coughs> you can see. Um, that, that now this is um, wanted to show you this. This is this is the the cemetery which is next to or just across the street from the Kirtland Temple, and uh, and this is an interesting uh, um, cemetery. There's there's quite a few uh, things that people there. This is my dear friend Kate Godfrey, and uh, when we were there um, with the tour, and he was telling about uh, some of the different people who are buried here in this cemetery. There's actually quite a few people who are who you recognize from early church history who are buried here. Um, there's a Neville. Um, I'm not sure if that's related to uh, Jonathan Neville, but uh, maybe. <laughs> okay. But anyway, here's that. Here's, here's Kay uh, sharing some insights into uh, who some of the people are that are buried there. John Johnson is there. There's a Kay again um, talking about this, and I wanted to, to bring up this was uh, this is. Thankful Pratt. This was our Private P. Pratt's uh, first wife, and when she passed away, um, he he was just devastated. And this is this is the monument that he that he had made for her. And I think it would be just interesting to to uh, to let you know what he put on her gravestone. Gravestone it says Thankful Halsey Pratt. My grief and sorrow. And loneliness, I shall not attempt to describe. Farewell, my dear thankful, thou wife of my youth and mother of my firstborn, the beginning of my strength, farewell. Yet a few more lingering years, and I shall be with thee. Parley P. Pratt. So I just, you know, just tell you how um, things are, the more the things change, the more they remain the same. <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, um, the grief and sorrow and, uh, and the loss of loved ones, um, was just as real and, uh, and, and, uh, painful then as it is now. There's a, a, another one of our tour groups there at the uh, Kirtland Temple. And, uh, there's another one that uh, along there, they had these Gothic windows that were just gorgeous that would actually let so much light in that they didn't have to have, um, uh, you know, candles or that kind of thing in there uh, it also would help the uh the, them to uh, heat the, the 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 room um just to give you an idea of this of scale there's you know people there to scale and here's uh, one of our tour groups here and i wanted to just give you a uh, th this is a little goodbye from them <laughs> okay from the tour group there at the kirtland temple and I, they, they don't allow you to take pictures inside the Kirtland Temple, but it's just absolutely gorgeous inside. If you ever get a chance to go there <coughs> with me on one of my tours, that would be fantastic. I would love to have you join me, and, uh, and we'll go and, and explore the Kirtland Temple. All right, and the last part of it here is um, after uh, the saints left Kirtland and things, and it was um, the church decided later on to build a, uh, a, a visitor center. And the visitor center has a lot of really pretty amazing things. It, it includes the, uh, the uh, uh, Newell K. Whitney store and several other old uh, period buildings, but also uh, a little bit of the, the, the industry of the Kirtland um, Saints. And uh, so this is, the, this is uh, historic Kirtland. This is one of the older um, known photographs of the uh, of the Kirtland area and the temple there, sat kind of up on a hill there, um, and you can kind of see in the the, the flat there. This uh, this is um, how it, how it would have looked back in the time then, 
And then that we get to this. Uh, this is a, uh, a sawmill that they that they had there, and this just kind of shows you how they would have been. Um, of course, they didn't have lights and so forth back then. But, but basically, so this is the sawmill. It actually has a big water wheel that would rack, would run the saw, and uh, and and so it, it, uh, it powers the saw. It's a great big saw. I'll show you that in just a second. This is the ashery. Um, but they would take uh, ash from the fires and they would make that into um, lye, which essentially is used for all kinds of things like soap and things. And they actually had quite a little industry going on here in Kirtland to to make those uh, those kinds of things that would that would be used. So they had an ashery. This is the sawmill. You can see the saw blade there towards the front of the of the image, and the log sitting there. And uh, so that that uh, would would go up and down, and the, the, and the saw would basically just you know cut the wood there, and then they would saw these uh, the, the, the the lumber into uh, usable wood. Uh, this is uh, oh, this is uh, Liam <laughs> Clifford. Um, he is the son of Mark and Jill Clifford of Legacy Tours and Travel, and uh, he's there enjoying the uh, the, the sawmill. Um, this is a dear friend of mine from up in Canada. He works in the lumber industry, so he was uh, he, he was loving the, seeing the, uh, the old uh, sawmill stuff and the, the old uh, blades and things like that. And uh, this is Ron Fawcett, and uh, so there you go, Ron. A little shout out to you. Um, and then there we have uh, there's the ashery where they would uh, they would um, take these kettles and they would uh, boil down. The, uh, the 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 ashes and things into it into a slurry and they would cook that slurry into bricks and and, and uh, anyway it's pretty interesting there's uh, missionaries that, that that tell you all about the whole process it's quite a process but this was actually quite a quite a nice income for many of the saints there in the uh, in the Kirtland area and uh, so this is just a little image of the of kind of what it's like the kind of the the the, the coint uh, area of of uh, historic Kirtland. Um, so I hope that that uh, gives you a little bit more of an idea of what um, a little bit what, what was going on in Joseph Smith's life and some of the uh, the uh, views of uh, of where they were living and, and the kind of rooms that they were living in, the homes that they were living in, the kind of the area there, and what was happening in the Kirtland period. And so hopefully uh, you've enjoyed that, and uh, we will see you next week when we're going to be talking about the uh, the, the, the the marvelous vision section seventy six of Joseph Smith and uh, when he talks about the, his, the visit of the Lord there. Thanks so much everybody for doing it. If you can uh, give us a like, give us a thumbs up and a, a like on our on the podcast here. Um, if you're enjoying these, we're going to keep uh, keep these going. We're excited about uh, the, the the ones coming up here. There's a lot to cover. And uh, also, we want to remind you, um, we, we do our, we're going to be having our conference in September. Um, it's going to be a live actual event this time, not just a virtual conference, which will be good <laughs> to have that again after COVID. Um, I am uh, excited about uh, the, you know, the, these uh, conferences. If, we, if you get a chance to go to our streaming website, we have uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, presentations from our conferences and things there. And uh, we will talk to you and we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us. Have a good week.